Welcome to Ready, Set, RC. And today we are finally doing the video I've been waiting to do, which is going to be the rally shootout. Now this is gonna be a full on contest between the three, it's not just gonna be performance and driven, that's it. So, so this is not gonna be a simple one video shot. And you guys are gonna to have to either follow the series or follow the playlist. What I plan on doing is breaking this down to five different categories. Price, quality, scaleness. Yeah, I'm making that a word. Parts, availability, performance, and performance is gonna be broken down to on tarmac and on dirt. And then the final video is going to be the tally and who is the winner. This will be measured on a three part metal system. So you have, you have five points for gold, three points for the silver and one point for the bronze. And let's talk about the contestants. The newcomer, which is the Charisma M48S. This is an eight scale rally. Hopefully you guys have seen the first thoughts video that I've done on this car, I have not driven this yet. We're gonna be driving this for the first time in the shootout. This car is not box stock. I have already swapped out the ESC. Did not think it was fair to have this going with the stock ESC in this shootout because it was just not enough for it. So we've swapped out the ESC on this one. This is now running a 100 amp ESC. This is probably the only one that is box stock, which is going to be the CN Racing Puma Rally 1. Also eight scale rally car. And then finally, the HPI WR8. The only thing that's not stock is the wheels. Tires are stock. These are the stock tires that come on this car. Another point to state on all three of these cars, there is no stability system in any of these RCs. There's no gyro or any type of throttle management on any of these cars. They are just raw throttle and steering. Nice car. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. <laughs> So let's get this thing kicked off. Let's talk about pricing. Looking at all these three and let's take the pricing on. Now I've purchased all three from the same site, Hobby Recreation Products. This one I purchased first, second, and the last one over here. The HPI WR8 Flux is currently going for $499.99 US. The CN Racing Puma Rally 1 is currently going for $459.99. And then the Charisma M48S is currently going for $369.99. The only thing that I would say, I put an asterisk next to this $369.99, I had to swap out the ESC. So that may ding it a little bit on the pricing, but we're gonna take it for what it is coming out box stock. $369.99, this gets the gold. $459.99, this gets the silver. And the HPI gets the bronze because of the $499.99 pricing. Quality. Let's go ahead and let's get into that. Now, the quality of how it after it performs, I'm not gonna talk about that because I haven't driven this one. I'm strictly just going off of the parts that are used in these RCs and what's the quality of the build of it, not the performance and how durable it is. This is not a durability. This is a quality of the parts that they use. Now, taking a look at the M48S, it's the only one in the whole lineup that has a tower to tower brace on it. Also, it is the only one that's not running a metal chassis. Limit, there are zero adjustability in regards to the battery tray. Most of the parts that are in this are composite, fixed composite links all throughout this. The fact that it came with a 60 amp ESC, I'm gonna ding it for that in quality. The tires, they feel okay but I would probably say 
just from the feel of it, I'm going to put this as probably the worst set of tires out of the three cars. Not saying that they're bad, but just that they're, they don't, the compound does not feel as good as the other two. Coil over screw down shocks. I like that. That's a plus, but that can go either way because sometimes when you have the ones that put in the clips, that's just exact. Shock towers, everything is composite. G10 chassis. Ugh. I'm not going to ding it for the, for the Phillips head screws. I don't think that's a ding. If you're using the proper drivers on there, Phillips head screws, there's no problem, even though everyone's used to hexes. Nothing to ding in regards to the motor. Dog bones throughout this. Um, we're going to have to see how that matches up with the rest of them, but dog bones, okay. Yeah, the sway bar is a little funky. There's nothing locking it on one side of here. I don't know if that's coming up on the camera. I don't know if I could get an angle where you guys can see it, but right here, it doesn't lock at anything. I do like that this is using Mod 1 gears though. That is definitely a plus for it. Mod 1 gears is a plus. Let's move on to the next car. The Puma Rally 1. Composite side guards up here. Machine shock towers. No sway bar but I do like that they're running a Max 10 system in here. Velcro battery straps. Battery tray is not adjustable, but the beauty of it is it's, it's a pretty large battery tray. This is the only one out of the three that is not running a slipper clutch or center diff. This one's running a direct drive system on it. The tire compound feels really good on this. There's adjustable links all over this car. Dog bones front and rear also on the Puma Rally one. Big bore shocks, but they are composite. This has a metal chassis on it. I like the quality of the Puma Rally one. Looks really good. Let's move on to the HPI WR8. The HPI WR8, metal chassis, composite side guards, adjustable battery tray, a lot of metal bracing all throughout this thing. Composite, composite chassis bracing which both of the other cars do have too. There is some composite chassis bracing that's on them. A mix of fixed links and adjustable links that are on here. You have clip adjustable shocks. So these aren't screwed down like the other two cars. The shock towers are metal on this. They're stamped aluminum, but they are metal. Dog bones on the WR8 front and rear. Center differential on the WR8. Mod 1 gears. And this is also running a hobby wing type system in it. A lot of metal thrown in the right places on the HPI. And the tire compound, probably the best in the industry for out of the three. Tire compound feels really good on these. They just wear a bit when you're on tarmac. If you're running these on tarmac or, or asphalt, concrete all the time, they do wear down pretty well. But I won't use that against it because we're not talking about durability and life, life cycle of the tires. We're only talking about what they feel like. And these feel really good. Now, next up in the quality department, I got to rate the controllers, guys. For the M48, this is the controller. Throttle feels good. Steering feels pretty good. It's a very plastic kind of controller. Uh, it has most of your trim settings, so you definitely are going to get uh, your throttle, your your throttle trim, your steering trim, your reverses for your throttle and steering, and then you have a dual rate for steering. No dual rate for throttle, though. It has a nice little handle. It's firm. This feels, even though it's plastic, feels pretty good in the hand, and I guess that's because the backside of this controller is a little roughed up, so it doesn't feel bad on the hands. It is kind of plasticky, but the throttle feels very smooth. And there's a decent amount of travel on there. So we'll put that one aside. This is the controller for the Puma Rally 1. Very basic. Throttle feels okay. Rubber wheel, a little bit of travel there. This has all of your dual rates. This has your steering trim, your throttle trim. It looks basic, it feels basic, but the fact that this has all the trims 
speaks a lot for it. Now this one's gonna be a little bit tougher because I'm not gonna rate it on the controller that I got with it. I'm gonna rate the controller that comes with it now. Now this is the controller that I got with it, which is the TF41. Nice foam wheel, has a little drop down. This has every trim known to man on there. So you have your throttle, you have your, your steering trim, your throttle trim, your dual rates. It's a third channel, which you don't really use, but it's there. Nice foam wheel, feels really good, has a handle. Flip up antenna. Yeah, it this, even though the handle's plastic, feels really good, but let's show you the one that comes with it now. The TF50, which is what comes with the WR8s now, also has a drop down wheel, foam, has every trim known to man, meaning it has your, has your endpoints for your throttle and for your steering, has your steering trim, your throttle trim, has your steering dual rate, uh, also has a magnet for your body pins, has a rubberized grip down here. Th throttle feels really good. Probably one of, the, one of the better RTR controllers out here. Has the ability to move the wheel for you lefty drivers. Moves the, you can move the actual steering from this side over to this side. Nice foam wheel. This probably, it, this is going to knock the other two out of the park. It, there's no comparisons. And there's also some rubber grommets down at the bottom to really keep that steady on the table for you. So yeah, it, it's gonna be very hard to compete with this with the TF50. So if I was going to give out the medals for each one, on the bot on the on the chassis quality alone, I would have probably given Five, I would have probably given a gold to both of these and then the bronze to the M48S, but I'm going to ding the Puma solely on its controller. Chassis wise, the quality is there. Just really wish the controller was better for this. Yes, it's an easy fix, swap it out, that's it. But we're not talking about swap it out, we're talking about what comes with these three RCs, as much stock as possible, minus the ESC, to compare them with. I'm gonna give this one the silver, and then I'm going to give the M48S the bronze. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Next category, scaleness. And this is where we're just gonna primarily look at the bodies, the shells. We're not really gonna look at the chassis so much because that doesn't really speak to the scaleness of the RC. Even though it's the entire presentation of the RC that gives you that scaleness, but we're gonna go simply on the shells for this. We'll start off with the WR8. And this body's been long in the tooth in regards to its wear, but I will put my brand new goggles on and give it as if I just got the RC. And I gotta say, the paint quality, the lightness of this looking like a Subi, it, it just looks really good. HPI knocked it out of the park in regards to the build and the look of this. Uh, the wing, they did a very good job. The clear windows, I really like the clear windows on this, especially with some of the roll cage through the windows that they're showing on there. It's a very good looking body. And I think HPI did a very good job in reference to the styling of the WR8. Now the Puma Rally 1, one of the newer RCs that have been released. This looks really good guys, really, really good. And they have the scale bits as in the mirrors on the back, that double wing, the venting here on the sides, I mean, they killed it. The venting on the top, they killed it with this body. CN Racing did a very good job with the Puma Rally 1. The shiny new Subi from Charisma, the Impreza WRC, and I gotta say, guys, this looks really good. Really, really, really good. Cruzma does a good job with their bodies and they definitely did not fail on this one. The, the rear wing is actually a molded composite and it matches really close with the rest of the body. To be able to do that with Lexan paint and then coming back and doing that rear wing and having the rear wing 
matching like that is really good. That's the one thing I will ding the WR8. The wing doesn't quite match the paint on the rest of the body. So for scaleness, I'm gonna give the Puma Rally 1 the gold on this one. The Charisma is going to get the silver and the WR8 is going to get the bronze. Now parts availability, this is where I think this is where it's going to be hilarious because the problem with parts availability, it differs as to depend on where you are in the world. But as I said, I'm trying to keep everything based on buying it from the same source on all of them. So all of these can be purchased on hobby recreation products. And the parts from them can all be purchased on hobby recreation products. At the time of this video, the Puma Rally 1 is not in stock. The WR8 is not in stock and the Charisma is in stock, but just became available after waiting. This was supposed to be released in the end of September and the time of this video, it is now November. When you guys watch it, it may even be later than that. So it took a while for this to release to HRP. It was being sold on their site, but HRP is where I prefer to purchase it and they just got these in. Parts wise, I don't believe there's gonna be third party parts on any of these. Maybe the WR8. That's the only one that's gonna have third party parts. There's no third, par no third party parts for this, none for the Puma Rally 1. WR8, I believe there are, but it's, it's a very slim and few, but there are. Reason why, this is a very older platform. New as of 2023, new as of 2023, the, at least the extended wheelbase version is new as of 2023. There was a, there is a shorter wheelbase version that came out before this and that can probably use some of the parts that, that are used on this. Looking at HRP's website, limited to no parts available for this. Also limited to no parts available for this. The car may not be available, but parts are available for this. So we're gonna give this the gold. Very hard to say. I'm just gonna give them both a silver because it's the same in regards to parts availability. So silver and also silver. So next up guys, we're gonna take this show out on the road. And that means we're taking all three on the road for tarmac and for dirt. You will see three separate videos for each one of these. The videos will have tar a tarmac run and also a dirt run. Also to keep it fair, all three of these will be running on three apps. Look forward to those videos. As we wrap up the series, we will have our final tally. I won't discuss who gets the gold, silver, or bronze in the running videos, we will wait for that tally to come out in the final video. So for the first video, the totals are 12 to the WR8, 12 to the Puma Rally 1, and 10 to the M48S. It's really close, guys. Going into the challenge with the tarmac and off-road, we're gonna see how these all shape up, but it is, the, it is really close. I did not expect it to be this close, separating all three cars by two points. So this is really gonna come down to the wire when we start putting this to the performance test. But we're gonna leave it here. Please like, comment, and subscribe to get the latest updates on the Rally Challenge. If you're not hitting the bell, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you won't see the playlist of all these cars. Check us out on Instagram and TikTok for the latest update to the challenge. So I'm gonna be posting updates to this on Instagram and TikTok, so please follow me there too because you'll see the latest and greatest news before I release the video here on YouTube. The only thing I won't release is the final tally. This is Ready Set RC signing out. Thanks again, guys.